Hello everyone. Good day and welcome. Nice to see you all. Sunday Adelaide you're here. Nola Shorunke, you are the first one. Victor Sal Victoria Salau. Obi Ajimadu. Rochelle White. Uh, Tak Israel Judah, welcome. Okonko Shukudi. If you're Mashinedu. G, G Game Eric. Josephine Onabo. Olumide Elijah. Bidemis Shomoye. Ola Bola. If you're Good evening. Anastasia McDonald's. McDonald. Dio Bichesson. Fumi Adeusi. Ola Martin, uh, Pastor Irene, Gift Okode, Samson Gigi Oke, Modupe Ajol, Ajulo, T.Y., Lara, Shomoye, Chris Sharp, Frenzy Cool, Ola Bola, Jumbo, Easy Egbe, Edwin, John Akerele, Obina, Eric Osadola, Vladimir Kirishenka, Onyi Okoro Onyye. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming back tonight. Uh, hope you are all doing well. I'm still in out of my out of my <laughs> place of abode. I'm still out of my house. I'm still in town. I'm still in the uh, hotel premises and the resort where I'm be having meeting here for some days. Pastor Tunde Bakari has gone, but. We still have one of the other important visitors left. So we're still here having meetings <laughs> the whole day. So, um, yeah. But thank God I'm able to come back to you. Thank God we're able to come back. And um, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. So today... Please go and share the link. Let's go and share the link before we commence. I would like to encourage you to go share the link for this program. Uh, go look for that link. Go look for the vid for the share button. You, you, the share button should be just under. You, the share button should be just under your video. Okay, Shioma says, Shioma said, you look well rested today. Well, maybe the difference is that today <laughs> I got smarter. I took a little break, go went to the swimming pool, did some swimming, then from the swimming pool I came here to meet you. Then after this after this session, we'll be I'll be going to continue my meeting with uh another pastor that is here with us. So uh, you know, we're going to continue our meetings after this. But at least I was able to bath. Uh, I mean, to, sorry, to go to the swimming pool and do some exercise and swim before before this program. But yesterday I was trying to leave it for for later, and later never came because uh, <laughs> we were in the meeting till three o'clock in the morning, and of course the swimming pool was long closed. So uh, so maybe that's why I'm a little bit fresher today, but still still pretty tired because you know it's like <laughs> totally busy absolutely busy so anyway yeah if you have shared the link if you have shared your link then we'll be ready to go please go share that link go look for the share button share the link and we'll be ready to go so share the link because that's the way you could get the copy of this message. If you share the link, that's the way you'll be able to get 
a copy of this message. Okay, here we go. The message for today is faith for your inheritance. Faith for your inheritance. Is that the way I call it, by the way? Faith for your inheritance. The faith for your inheritance. Okay, the faith for your inheritance. Right, the faith for your inheritance. So, um, we keep on studying the scriptures from Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. That's the chapter of faith. Just like we have um, the Corinthians chapter 13, that's the chapter on love. And Hebrews 11 is the chapter on faith. And Hebrews 11, verses 8 to 10, for Hebrews 11, verse 8 to 10, I would like us to read that. Hebrews 11, verse 8 to 10. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he will receive as an inheritance, okay? And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By, by faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By the way, my book, Only God Can Save Nigeria, What a Myth, is now available on Amazon and Okada Books. So you want to read that book. It's going to be a quick read. It's a simple read, not too big. But that book is going to revolutionize your life and the life of every Nigerian or every person that really wants to see transformation in their countries. So now, here we go. The faith for your inheritance. This scripture tells us, it's telling us about Abraham. Abraham, who is the absolute uh, example that we all have. He's our father of faith. He's a patriarch, a patriarch of faith. And Bible is telling us about him and say that by faith, Abraham obeyed God when he was called out to go to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. Now, Abraham didn't even know who this God was in the first place. He didn't know who God was. He didn't know he was obeying the right God or the wrong God. He had his own God before. But here he was you know, being called out by another God. And this God was claiming that he was going to make him the father of nations and that he was the right God. And uh, Abraham, the Bible tells us that stepped out of his country, of his uh, comfort zone, and stepped out to, you know, by faith, to follow God and to inherit the country that he was, he, he's never heard of before that. Now, every believer, every believer is also having one promised land or the other. All of us have been promised a land. So I want you to look at yourself differently. You are not just to be a believer that is a church goer. Uh, for as many as obey the call of the Lord Jesus Christ, as many as this have decided to follow him, God is giving a promise, the promise of a land, or a land of promise to every individual Christian. So all Christians have their own land of promise. Unfortunately, the way we look at Christians these days is as if the land of promise of the Christian is the church. <laughs> it's like the land of promise of the Christian is the local church. It's because that's the only place Christians go to. 
But really, beyond the local church, apart from the local church, God has given or and has promised every Christian a land of promise. God has promised a land to every Christian. God has promised every Christian a, a, an inheritance, a land of promise, a land that he, should, he or her should inherit. So you being a church goer is not really doing much God, much God, more, I mean, much credit to God. Being a church goer is doing credit to you, but not to God. Being a church goer is doing credit to you, but not to God. So for you to actually, you know, honor God big time, you need to believe God like Abraham believed God. So God, just like God, what happened to Abraham, that's exactly what is happening to us today. God called out Abraham from his, you know, lifestyle, from the, you know, uh, environment that he was more familiar with, from uh, his nation, from his family, from his comfort zone, and challenged him to believe him, and said, if he will believe him, uh, if they, if he will believe him, he will make him, he will give him a land, he will give him a land, a land of promise. The same, same thing God is doing today, because it's still the same God we have today. So everybody that is being called to come to the kingdom of God is being given a land, a land of promise. Every one of us have our own land of promise. And what is the key to you knowing your own land of promise? The key to you knowing your land of promise is your gift, your passion, your talents, and you know, the, and the way for you to discover those your gifts and your talents, I've already taught it, and you can go and listen to those teachings on how to discover your calling. But God has given enough indications in you. He has put enough indication, indicators in your body, in you. He has planted enough indication, indicators in you for you to know that God is calling you. Not, but you know, when I talk about God is calling you, I don't mean that God is calling you to be a pastor. I don't mean that God is calling you to be a preacher. I'm saying that God is calling you to be, to, to fulfill his will. Go to, to inherit your own promised land, to reclaim a certain promised land back to him. You, just the same thing as it was with Abraham, and so it is with us today. As it was with the fathers of old, the patriarch of old, so it is with us today. God is calling all of us to go up, come and inherit our own promised land. God is calling all of us to come and inherit our promised land. Our promised land. And so you have your own promised land. Now, the thing is that we are now studying about Abraham. And unfortunately, the way the churches have preached and pastors and preachers have preached about the story of Abraham is in such a way that we will all just admire him. Oh, Abraham, such a great man of God. Wow, what a faith he had. Oh, great. And then some other people have preached it in such a way that we just say, we take Abraham for a ride. We take him for a ride and say, oh, Abraham has already paid the price. Abraham is my father, so I have the blessings of Abraham. But the main purpose why God has left the story of Abraham for us and he has put it in the Bible that we should keep on learning from it. They actually, the purpose of learning is not history. The purpose of learning is not history. And the purpose of learning also is not just to repeating and retelling the story. That is not the purpose of why God has put these stories in the Bible. Otherwise, it will only remain a story. But the reason why God has placed them in the Bible is for us to know how life is supposed to be lived on earth. God's expectation, these are God's expectation of how life is to be lived on earth. So whenever you read the story of Abraham, it's not just telling you stories. It's showing you a pattern. It's showing you a prototype. It's showing you a model, a prototype that you have to follow, that you can copy, that you can repeat. The whole idea of having these stories in the Bible is that we could all repeat them. We can all be in the position to repeat them. So it is normal, it is actually possible that we will also do the same thing inside. It's not just that it's possible. God put them there that it might be easier for us to be able to repeat their feet. God put their stories there just so that we will be able to repeat their feet. Now, but the way, what we have done is that we have said, Papa Abraham, <laughs> we have many sons and one of them, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Uh, well, you could claim Abraham's blessings as yours. That's not bad. 
Yes, they are yours. But God wants you to become the Abraham of your own nation. God wants you to become the Abraham of your own land. God wants you to become the Abraham of your own promised land. That is the big deal. That is now when you are talking. You know, that's why Jesus said, it's things that I've done that you will do greater things. So it's not just, he doesn't just want you to be impressed by what he has done. He doesn't want, just want you to be applauding him for what he has done. And he doesn't just not want you to uh, be applaud what uh, Abraham has done as well. He wants you to emulate them, to emulate them. That's what, why Paul said that, uh, imitate me as I Im imitate Christ. You know, follow them. The reason is why we're seeing their stories here is that we might emulate their, their faith. Is that we might emulate their faith. So, but just knowing their stories and repeating, repeating, and that's why church is boring sometimes. Because, you know, you keep on repeating all these stories. Jesus did this, he healed that, he, he did that. And everybody is repeating the stories. And, and that's what the church what church is all about. And everybody is thinking, but I know this thing, what is the whole thing about? But the idea is not about knowing the stories. The idea is about you. The idea is about you repeating those feet. The idea is about you emulating and being able to repeat those victories and those victories. And so when we talk about Abraham leaving his promised land, I mean, leaving his father's land and going after the promised land, it is a picture of what is supposed to happen to I and you. We too, whenever we are called from Egypt, we are brought out of Egypt so that we might be brought into our promised land. Everybody's got a promised land. There is no human being that is saved that does not have his own promised land. Just the same thing with in the story of Abraham. There is no one that is called without being promised a land. So all of you have your own promised land. The question now is that will you ever get up? Will you ever get up out from your seat? Will you ever get up from where you are sitting? Will you ever get up from your comfort zone to begin to repeat the feet of Abraham? Will you ever get out of your comfort zone to stand up and begin to move towards inheriting your own land? Will you set out on a journey? Will you set out on a journey like Abraham has done? Will you set out on a journey to discover that city that is not built by man, that is built by faith? That city that is built by God. Will you set out yourself on a journey? Will you be able to say, yes, my life is a journey? Actually, our lives is supposed to be a journey, a journey of discovery and a journey of becoming fathers of nations, just like Abraham. It is a symbol that was given to us. It is a, it is a, it is a model that his life was a model for us to be able to repeat, not just for us to be able to, 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 to tell the story, to narrate. We don't just narrate their life stories, we repeat them. We repeat them and we attain the same glory and we give God the same glory like they did. So every believer is promised a land of promise. Everybody has, everybody has his own land of inheritance. So the question that you must answer yourself is about your own inheritance. Have you identified the play? have you identified the call? Have you identified the area of calling that God is challenging you to bring to bring His kingdom to and the land that is calling you to to inherit for Him? Have you identified that? And the way to identify, like I said, is through your gifts. Is in you. Your own land of promise is in within you. The, in this case. The land, your land of promise is not, uh, is not in some geographical place necessarily, but you discover it in you. It could be in some geographical place, you know, some people are called to nations or cities, but, you know, the, the main thing where you are going to, how you are going to go, get to know about it is inside you. So every believer is promised a land of promise. We have our own inheritance from God, but only few Christians ever step out of their comfort zones of the church only a few christians ever step out of the four walls of the church only a few christians ever step out in faith to be, be able to repeat the feet of uh abraham we, we just like to tell the story of abraham but we don't like to act like abraham and that's why we don't have the testimonies of abraham and that's why we uh, we are not uh, we, we we don't have the results that abraham has 
Uh, so it is, it, is, it is important that you will know that your life on earth, on daily basis, that your daily life, your daily living is a purposeful living. It's, it must be as purposeful as that of Abraham. Abraham, when Abraham left his his, uh, his, his, his parents and his relatives and everything, he knew that he was pursuing a city. He knew that he was pursuing a city. He has a goal. So every day of his life, he was taking a journey. He was traveling. In that journey, he was going. He kept on going. Why? He was looking for that city that God promised him. He was looking for the city that is not built by the hand of man. He was looking for a city that is built by faith. So, so, so the same thing is supposed to be happening to I and you today. We are supposed to be living every day of our life in pursuit of a, an invisible city that God has promised us. We are supposed to be living our everyday life in pursuit of the land of promise that God, <coughs> that, <coughs> that God has promised us. So we all have our own land of promise. And we are all individually are supposed to be doing something every day that is bringing us closer to that land of promise. We all have the land of promise where we are supposed to be attaining and, you know, graduating to and moving towards on daily basis. We, you must be certain that your life is being guarded by your vision, that your life is being guarded by the city that you are seeing, the invisible city, but that you are seeing by faith ahead of you. Your daily life, every step of the way, every day of your life, you must intentionally know that you are moving closer today than you know, where you are tomorrow in relations to the goal, to the life goal, and to the land of promise that God has promised you. You must, you know, know that every day you have a certain speed, you have a certain pace that you are, you know, you are, you are covering to be able to get to that land of promise that God has for you. Now, the major question that you have to resolve as Christians, like most Christians, is that we are just existing. We don't have that dream. We don't have that drive. We don't have that city. We don't have that you know, vivid image in our mind of the city that we are going to. Like, for example, let's, let me use my own example. Every day I wake up in the, in the day, and every day I walk during the day, I'm seeing my own city ahead of me. The city that is going to be built by faith. I'm not talking of necessarily a physical city, but I'm seeing the vision, that my land of promise. And the land of promise that I have from God, and the land of, that, the land of promise that he wants me to inherit for him, that land of promise is 500 million people, 500 million people. I must be able to bring 500 million people to the Lord before I leave this world. I must be able to influence 500 million people before I leave this world. Through myself and through my disciples, 500 million people. So that 500 million people is what I am you know, uh, uh, pursuing on daily basis. I am walking towards it. Just like Abraham left his own city and was walking intentionally every day, walking, moving towards the city that is ahead of him, that is going to be a city that is not built by, by man, but by God and by God, by faith. So, so also by faith, in by faith, I am moving forward. I'm moving towards that 500 million people that is the city that my faith is going to construct for God and for, 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 for the kingdom of God and for God's glory on the earth. And then I'm doing many things. I'm putting, putting projects in place on a daily basis to just, you know, moving towards closer every day to, so, you know, to, 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 towards that the goal that is before me. And also another goal that is before me is to be able to see a new Nigeria in, my, in our lifetime. Is to be able to see a new Nigeria in our lifetime. The ability to be able to see a new nation. And, and Africa, not just Nigeria, a new Africa in our lifetime. And that's why you've not been seeing me, you know, in, in my place, in my normal place where I teach. I've not been at home. I've been in a camp all this week. Uh, you know, you know, brainstorming and strategizing and working and doing conference calls and, you know, putting things together to be able to see a new Nigeria, to be able to see a new Nigeria. So I'm walking towards it every day, you know, 
just like Abraham walked every day towards the city that God said is you will inherit, so also you should be walking every day towards the city that God is saying you should inherit. God does not call a man without giving him a promise of a land of promise, of a land. God does not call a man without promising him a land of promise. There is a land of promise in your life. There is a land of promise on your destiny. There is a land of promise that you are supposed to be pursuing on a daily basis. There is a goal that you are supposed to be living for. There is something ahead of you. Some purpose for which God created you. Some purpose for which you are here. For which God has packaged you and you know and and uh, designed you to be able to accomplish. But you know what normally happens to Christians? We think now that the land of promise is the church. So as long as we are going to church, we are fine. So we just end up going to church, we go to church, and that's it. And, and it's, it's, it jeopardizes our destiny. Because we get satisfied that we are believers. Uh, we will get satisfied that we go to church. We get satisfied that we are Christians. We get satisfied that the pastor knows our name. We get satisfied that we give our tithe and offering. We get satisfied that, you know, the church cannot do without us. We get satisfied that we have a place there to sing or to be in the usher or choir. We get satisfied just doing the minimum. But we are, <laughs> we are exchanging that for, we are exchanging our destiny for some sheep religiosity. We are exchanging the destiny to become fathers of nations. We are exchanging the destiny to become, you know, you know, to be able to inherit the city that is built by God. We are uh, uh, exchanging the prospect of being commended by God. We are exchanging all that to just the comfort of being recognized by a certain church, of just being known uh, by, you know, some believers and not doing anything, just going to church. Going to church is not your promised land. Going to church is just something that you go to do to strengthen yourself, something that you do to, you know, to encourage yourself and to fellowship with believers. But that is not your promised land. So the fact that you just go to church and pay your time, fulfill your Christian duty, that is not your Christian duty yet. Just like Abraham, Abraham had his own duty and his duty was not just to go there somewhere and, and get and just sit down there and just say, okay, I'm waiting for your promise to come to pass. No, his duty was to go in pursuit of that land that God was leading him to and that God was promising him. God has promised us and he's promising each, of, uh, each and every one of us also a certain land. And we all will, will, must stand up and begin to go after you know, and walking towards that particular land of promise that God is promised to us. So, um, you know, the first thing that that deprives us of our land of promise is our religiosity. We think that by going to church that we have doing we are doing our best. The next thing that deprives us of our uh, inheritance and of our land of promise is the fact that we are giving money, a tight offering, and all kind of money. We sometimes th think that because we give money and offering to church, that we are good enough. That the offering and tithe that we are giving to church, that's all that is needed. Now that I've given my offering, I've given my tithe, what does God need from me anymore? That, you know, I've done my own duty. Those are the things that are depriving us of actually the opportunity of pursuing and inheriting our own promised land. Another thing that in, you know, distracts us and... Uh, you know, and steals our land of promise from us is uh, doubt, doubt. And that is why we are studying uh, the man we are studying today, Abraham. Abraham didn't doubt God, even though he didn't know him. He didn't know him at that time. Abraham didn't doubt God, even though it was the first time God was appearing to him. He was able to believe. So doubt stops a lot of people. Doubt in one sense, in the sense that, oh, if I start to go out and step out to do something in the, in the area of my calling, how am I sure that it's going to work out? How am I sure that, you know, I'm going to make it? How am I sure that things will work out? Or what about if it doesn't work out? What about if I fail? What about if people don't support me? What about if people criticize me? What about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? All those questions, the questions on doubt, they stop us from inheriting our possession a lot of times. Then another thing is vanity. Vanity. You know, vanity or vanity is surrounding how to make a living. We just want to try to make a living. 
we are tr all struggling and trying to make a living. So that, that, that focus, wrong focus, when we focus on, you know, trying to make it, when we focus on trying to make a living, when we focus on job, when we focus on salary, when we focus uh, on just surviving and, you know, just surviving and making a living, that distracts us totally away from pursuing our own land of promise. So we don't pursue any land of promise. We just, you know, we just want to survive. And as long as you want to survive, you cannot live for purpose. As long as you want to survive, you want to make a living, you are not living, actually. You are surviving. You are trying to make a living. And because you are trying to make a living, destiny passes you by. You pass by destiny. Because you are trying to make a living, destiny and purpose just, you know, they just pass you by. They become, you, you live a life of emptiness. You live a life of mirage. You live a life, a life of, um, you know, total emptiness. So doubt and vanity and other things that rob us of, of our land of promise. Um, and of course, the, one of the greatest things that rob us of, of our land of promise is um, lack of action, lack of action. You know, sometimes faith has been presented in churches in a very bad way. Uh, faith has been presented as, as something you should just believe for and you, that you don't need to work for towards. So people tell us to believe God. Faith is just believe God for this. Believe God for it. You don't need to work towards it. And, and it's a lie. You know, faith desire, I mean, uh, demands work because faith without work is dead. Faith without work is dead. So faith demands work. And if you believe God, the, the, the evidence that you believe God is how much work you are doing, how much, how much work you are putting into it to show that you really believe in God. And, but in the in our Christian charismatic uh, circles today, we have been preached faith to as if uh, if you believe it, God will just come and do it. And you name it, claim it. Yes, name it, claim it. As if you just need to name it and claim it, or you just you know you don't need, you don't need to do much. As if you don't need to struggle, you just need to do the minimum thing that you want to do, and then things will work, will come to pass. But it's not true. It's not real faith. That is um, that deceptive faith. That is a substituted faith. And which is, you know, which doesn't bring you any result. It's a, it's a micro, microwave kind of faith. And it's a deception kind of faith, deceptional kind of faith. So, uh, but at Abraham, uh, being the first person, I mean, that, that's why he became the father of faith. Because can you imagine, you've never heard of this God before. You've never had the story. In our own case, it's much more easier, right? It's easy because we, we can fall back on the, to the, on the example of Abraham. We could fall back on the example of the, the, all the heroes in the Bible. But here, Abraham was the very first one that was called by God into an inheritance. And the question, uh, the question is, how did he make it? And how did he, you know, believe God towards the end? How did he, to the end? How did he hold on to the end that this was real God and that this is the real God, this is the real thing, this is the genuine thing, and that they needed to keep on following God? The answer is in Hebrews 11, 8 that we just read. The answer is by faith. By faith, Abraham left his, his father's place, his, his, in, his own land, by faith. It is faith. So it says, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to the place which he would receive an inheritance. By faith, Abraham stepped out. He stepped out in faith. By faith, he left everything behind. By faith, he left his relatives. By faith, he followed the leading of the Lord. By faith, he believed the voice that he didn't even know anything about. By faith, he knew that he, there is going to be a city out there, an inheritance out there for him, just like he was promising. By faith. So what is faith? How can you do that in your own life? We have read what Abraham did by faith. He believed and stepped into out of mediocrity into his own land of promise. How do you do the same thing? How do I and you do the same thing? How do we use faith to step in our into our land of inheritance? It's simple. The way to do it is you remember faith is <laughs> some people are trying to get me on Skype, you know. I must say, I'm supposed to be having a meeting right now, you know, important meetings, <laughs> national meetings, and I'm here with you guys. <laughs> so they are calling me already. 
but I must finish this program with you guys before I go back to them. Anyway, um, what does that mean? How do we step out in faith? How do we copy Abraham? The key is this. When, Ab when God spoke to him and told him that, get out of your land and I'm going to take you to another land and, and to, you know, you are going to build, I mean, in a, to another city, to another world, the way you will become the father of nations. He, he received it. He saw it in front of him. He, faith always has hope. Faith starts with hope. The first stage of faith is you must have something that you are looking forward to. So that word that God gave him became the promise, the, 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 the hope, the vision, the goal, the mission, the, the vision that he was living up to. So for you to really be able to live by faith, you must first of all picture something in front of you. You must first of all uh, have a vision. You must first of all, you know, have a goal that you are moving towards. So God helped um, Abraham because he gave him a goal. He gave him a target. He gave him a vision. And you cannot say that God is not helping you, that God has not done the same thing for you. God has done the same thing for all of us. God has given and buried in us our goals and purposes. God has buried in us our, 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 our calling. And the way we should discover that is true by observing ourselves, looking inside for our talent, looking inside for our gift, looking inside for, for, for the, you know, for the for the um, for the in inbuilt uh, desires and, and wishes that God has already put in us. So those inbuilt wishes they are calling to us that follow me, follow my my leading, follow this talent, follow these gifts, follow this capacity. So God is calling all of us through this gift. You will inherit your own land of promise. Through this talent, you inherit your land of promise. So just like God did that to, in the case of Abraham, he just gave him a voice, a word. But in our own case, we have it in our giftings. We have it in our talents. We have it in the leading of the Holy Spirit that is in us. We have it in the word of God. We have it in the examples of the patriarch that have lived before us. We have many, many ways of discovering uh, that God is calling us to our own land of promise as well. But the way to believe like Abraham is, first of all, you must discover the, what that goal is. You must have a goal. You must have a hope. The hope must be in connection to your calling. The hope you are having must not just be some fantasy. I want to become a billionaire. I want to become this. I want to become a governor. I want to become a president. No, no, no. It must be in something that is coming out of you. Something that is, you know, in... Uh, in symphony with the giftings and the talents that is already in you, with the voice of God, the leading of the Spirit that is in you. So you have a goal. But the difference is, I mean, the difference between most of us is that we have, and Abraham is that we normally have a goal or a dream, but it only remains a dream. What is the difference between a dream and a goal? A goal is somebody is moving towards that goal, but a dream, somebody is just dreaming and is not moving towards it. So faith is when you have that goal before you, when you have that target before you, and then you are at the same time walking towards it. When you are walking every day, that's what Abraham did. He, God gave him a target of a city, of, of an arena, in, in a promised land ahead of him, somewhere a promised land. He saw that as his target, and he stepped out immediately and started walking towards that promised land that God has given, I mean, has promised him. That is faith now. Faith acts on the promise. Faith acts on the hope. Faith yeah, does everything possible to work out the, the, the promise. So faith is actually working on the, on the promise, on the, on the word that has been given. It's not just waiting for the, for the word to come to pass. It's working out the word. Is producing substance of that promise. Is producing evidence of that promise. So it is the the ongoing att attempts and efforts, efforts to bring th that vision to pass. That is faith. Now, let's go back to you. Let's go back to you. Where is your own vision, and what is it like right now? Can you get a picture? Do you have a picture of the city 
that you are going to inherit or the land of promise that God has promised you? Do you have a picture of what you want to do in your life? Do you have a picture of the the the, the of the uh, of the inheritance you want to leave? Do you have a, a picture of the land of promise that you want to conquer for the Lord? Do you have that picture of what you are looking for? That's number one. Number two, are you working daily towards that? Are you doing your best? Are you studying? Are you doing research? Are you working hard? Are you giving your best? Are you becoming the best that you could be in pursuing after that goal that is in front of you? And are you working so hard that you know exactly when you are going to, uh, approximately when you are going to attain that goal and you know that you are marking your progress and your progress are traceable? Are you really living like that? It's your everyday life. A pursuit is your everyday life a, a pursuit of that goal is your everyday life all around the implement implementation of that purpose if that is the way you are living that's the right way to live but if you are just living to make a living on a daily basis you are wasting life you are wasting life in the very sense so yeah so by faith Abraham obeyed so if you have an inclination in your spirit that God is calling you to do this and that, are you obeying? Oh, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure, more, maybe later, maybe that. It means you don't have faith. Faith is what makes you to obey. By faith, he obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive an inheritance. By faith, he did that. So, so, uh, 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 and so the thing is not just about us reading about what Abraham did. But what am I doing concerning my calling? So we, we all want the blessings of Abraham. Yeah? Yeah. We have been taught to receive the blessings of Abraham. But we have not been taught enough on, to act like Abraham, to behave like Abraham, to follow the footsteps of Abraham, and to practice our faith like Abraham practice, practice his faith. We just want to receive something for nothing. We just want to receive... A blessing. We just want to receive, uh, you know, breakthrough. We just want to receive something without doing much about it. But in the real sense, the real thing, lesson of the of the life of Abraham is that we might be able to put our lives together and order our steps and actually fashion our lives that it will be like his own. For us to be able to have the success that Abraham had, we must be able to duplicate the steps that he took. So, if we want the blessings of Abraham. We should be willing to take the actions of Abraham. We should be willing to, 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 to have the faith of Abraham. So, because when you are seeing the goal, the faith is the drive, is the, is the motor that is in you, is the locomotive that is in you, that is making you to want to run after it. When you believe really in something, you want to pursue it. When you really believe in something, you want to... You know, you want to step out there. Faith is that energy that is that is propelling you forward. Faith is that you no know, willingness, that strong desire, that obsession to begin to implement it right now. So that is faith. So 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 if you are dreaming about something and you are not doing everything you could on a daily basis to bring that to pass, you are not really living by faith. You are living by expectation and by illusion. So to have Abraham's blessings, we must have Abraham's faith. It is not enough to just claim Abraham's blessings. Many people are just busy claiming Abraham's blessings. But apart from claiming, you must begin to comply. You must begin to live like Abraham lived. So let's follow uh, the, 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 the saga of faith uh, of Abraham, of Abraham's life. In verse 8, in verse 8 that we started reading, the Bible says, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to, to the place which he would receive an, as an inheritance. Okay. The first thing we must do if we are to inherit the promised land, our own promised land, is that we must step out of our comfort zone. You see, sometimes the way we have been taught in church is that when man of God prays for you, you know, things will just work out for you. You will not need to step out of your comfort zone. 
uh, with the impression we have is that if we give that tithe or offering, if you give that, if you sow into this man or into that man or into this anointing or to this, that we will not need to pay the price. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You will still have to pay the price. There is no amount of anointing. There is no man, man of God in the world. There is no man, amount of sowing that will relieve you of coming out of your comfort zone. There is no human being on earth that finishes, I mean, that that uh, was able to fulfill his or her promise, I mean, his, his, of her, yeah, his or her vision without stepping out of his or her comfort zone. So for us, for you and I, to actually ever come to inherit our promised land and to be to ever be able to make an impact on earth, we must we must roughen our own feathers. We must be willing to step out of our comfort zone. We must be able to step out of our comfort zone. So if you are not willing to step out of your comfort zone, forget about those prayers. Forget about those breakthrough prayers, those uh, seed offering, first fruit offering, and all those offering, offering, offering. They will not save you. They will not save you. Even Father Abraham had to step out of his comfort zone. So get used to it. Get used to it. There is no fulfillment of vision and there is no fulfillment of destiny without the stepping out of your of comfort zone. So just get used to it. Don't wait for miracles. That a miracle will happen that will prevent you from stepping out of your comfort zone. It will not happen, no. No miracle will happen. No miracle will happen. You have to step out of your comfort zone. You've got to do something you don't like to do. You've got to, you know, close your eyes and roll off your sleeves and do the hard work and and get out and get out of your comfort zone and make things uncomfortable for yourself. Uh, the reason why a lot of people don't want to, you know, change what they are doing or pursue their purpose is because they know it's going to be difficult. And so we would rather go and pray and wait for miracles and wait for men of God to lay hands on us and bless us. You know, well, that is living in deception. That is living uh, a, a, a deceptive lifestyle. If you really want to inherit your own promised land, you must do what the father, the patriarch of faith did. He had to leave his comfort zone. So you might need to make a list of your own comfort zone right now. You might want to make a list of your comfort zone and say, okay, what are my comfort zone? What are the uh, things that I, I don't want to leave? What are the things that I don't want to, you know, separate myself from? What are the things that I don't want to really, you know, stop doing? So you need to find those things, make a list of them and find a way for, for you to, you know, step out of them and, you know, change is difficult. Change is one of the greatest uh, challenges of our days. People, people don't like to change. Almost nobody likes to change. But until you change, nothing changes. And until you change, there is no progress. Until you change, there is no, yeah, there, 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 are, no, there are no results. So you will not really have results until you are, you are willing to step out of your comfort zone. You will not have results until you are willing to pay the price of, you know, coming out of that comfort zone. <laughs> you know, for Abraham, he had to go out to a place where he doesn't know by faith. The same thing with us. We, you know, stepping out by faith to obey God by faith. Yeah, and he's also stepping out to unknown places. He's walking in the unknown. It is walking in the unknown. So walking in the unknown is, is not comfortable. And it's better to always walk in the place where you already know. But for you to really get to a, another place, for you to get other results, better results, you must be willing to walk in the unknown. You must be willing to willing to walk in the unknown. So you must be able to take risk. That's what it means. There is no fulfillment in life without taking a risk. There is no fulfillment in life without taking a risk. Don't let people deceive you. Faith doesn't mean lack of you know. Faith doesn't mean lack of risk. Faith is also risk. It could be calculated risk, but it is risk. So you must be willing to step out and walk on waters. You must be willing to step out and walk on waters. Without that, nobody attains anything in life. Either they are believers or they are not believers. These are just life's rules and principles. You must be willing to 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 come out of your comfort zone. You must be willing to ruffle your feathers. You must be willing to walk in unknown in unknown places before you could make any tangible progress in your life. In your life. Uh, 
And you should know that if you really believe in something, if it is really faith, you are hoping to get to, towards it, and that faith will become an energy. It will become a propeller inside of you, and it will give you the power, the motor, the energy to walk towards it. So, friends, God is telling somebody right now that you must live where you are, that you must leave your comfort zone for sure and begin an adventure of faith with God. Not necessarily physically. It could be physically leaving your physical place for some place, for some people. For some other people, it might be their job. For some other people, it might just be their church. So for some other people, may be just some, anything that has become a comfort zone for you. You must leave it. But before you leave that place, you must also have a goal and the hope and the mission that you are pursuing. You must have a goal, a target in front of you that you are pursuing. And pursuing is by acting it out, by working on it, by working it out. Okay. So it's more challenging, especially when you don't know where you are going in the physical and to then do something by faith when you don't know where you're going. That leads to the second point, to the second lesson that we can learn from uh, Abraham. That second lesson is we need to obey. We need to learn to obey the God that has given us the vision. We need to learn to obey the God that has given us uh, the promise. The Bible says here that by faith, it dwelt in the land. I mean, sorry, by faith, Abraham obeyed. By faith, Abraham obeyed. So, you know, if, God, if, if, if you see the tendency and the element of the thing that God is giving you, you know, you just obey. Just obey. Obey is knowing that God is not a liar. Obey that is knowing that, you know, his word is stronger than your comfort. His word is stronger than, you know, your, your, your assurance, whatever your assurance was. So Abraham was a man of obedience. And that is another lesson that we could learn from him. He obeyed the voice of God. And all of us, God is waiting on us, all of us to obey his instructions, to obey in his, his instructions for, for, for us. And to obey means to begin to do something in line of your calling. To obey means to begin to do something in line of your calling. And to begin to move towards that your promised land, that your vision. Produce that goods, produce that service, start that company. You know, do anything that God is asking you to do. Begin to do something now. Don't wait till the, or the, the conditions are right. Begin to do something now. Now, you will not see the result immediately. And that's why faith comes in. Faith is for you to be able to work and labor and not seeing the result. But you know that the result will come, but you are working towards it, calculating when the result will come, how it will come. But you are not stopping. You don't stop working. You keep on working to the realization of that vision. So don't look, don't live in an illusion, my friends. Work, hard work must come first before a Fulfill, before the fulfillment of God's promise. In that same verse 8, it says, and he went out not knowing where he was going. <laughs> now, that's another lesson that we must learn from Abraham. Uh, to live for God and to actually attain anything in life, there, will be, there, is, there are different stages. And one of the stages that you have to go through is the stage of uncertainty. There will always be the stage of uncertainty. You don't know for sure. Will it work or will it not? It will not work. This happens to every human being. It's not only to you. No matter how much faith you have, you will still have that, uh, that natural, human, carnal response of the flesh saying, okay, am I sure? Will it work? Will it not work? But even despite your faith, your doubts, when you, despite your questions, keep on going. When you don't stop, when you know that you are doing your calculations as much as possible, you are doing your, uh, your, you know, your due diligence as much as possible, but still you're still thinking, okay, will it work or will it not work? That moment of doubt, it will always be there. So don't be afraid of that doubt. Don't be afraid of the doubt of uncertainty, okay? Some people, because of the doubt of uncertainty, they keep on waiting forever. And you know what they will be telling you? Oh, I'm waiting for confirmation. I'm waiting for confirmation. What do you mean by confirmation? You want, you want to wait until there is no more uh, uncertainty? You know, that is not confirmation. That is, if you already have a certainty, that is fact. 
you know, that is fact, but you must, that is the, that's where the faith factor comes in, that you are not very certain, but you believe, you believe that you are, you are not supposed to walk, you still keep on walking towards, you are not supposed to stop, sorry, but you keep on walking towards that goal. You keep on walking towards that goal, even though you might have some doubts of your head, but you are calculating things, you are working out the way it, it, it will be. So the stage of uncertainty is natural. The, the stage of uncertainty is natural in the life of uh, everybody. So don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of that. those moments and those stages in life. Even in marriage, uh, when you get married, sometimes you know you are thinking, will it work or will, not, will, not, will, will it not work? Will I be able to be a good wife or not? Will I be able to cook? Will they like me? Will they not? You know, all those kind of things come in life. They are just natural. So, But faith is the ability to still keep on believing for the best and move forward and seeing evidence, producing evidence and products that or, 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 or substance that you see my assurance lays on this that they are going to get the desired result. Now, in verse 9, it says, By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country. And that is another lesson we can learn from Abraham. Even when he had already entered his land of promise, he didn't become a millionaire all of a sudden. He didn't become a millionaire the next day. Things didn't just work out for him that he got all provisions and all everything provided for the very next moment. He went to that land of promise. He even got there. But when he got there, he was just living there as a sojourn. He was just living there as a foreigner. He was living there as a, as a refugee because he didn't have anything with him. He had to start everything afresh. But sometimes we are thinking, if it's the will of God, everything will be provided. If it's the will of God, everything will be ready. If it's the will of God, I will not need to struggle. If it's the will of God, I will not need to suffer. No. Any achievement requires that you suffer first. There is no way you will ever attain anything of significance without suffering first. Because you have to work hard for it. In the beginning, you have to work hard. And when you work hard, you suffer. And so it's just natural to suffer first. So don't believe all those uh, petty and primitive messages and teachings that people give in churches that, oh, everything will be good. Oh, it is the will of, it's not the will of God if it is bad. Or it's not the will of God if things are tough. No, 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 no. Look at this man. This man, that is what qualifies him to be a man of faith. That even in the land that God promised him, he got there, things became like hell. Things became so difficult and he would not quit. He kept on working. He kept on building that city. He kept on building tents. He kept on doing everything he could do in his own power. So, so if we want to change any, see anything change in our land of promise or in our countries, you know, it is not enough to just say, okay, I'm going there. Let God do his work. Let God do his miracle. Let God provide. You know, God has done everything he needs to do. It is your time for you to step out and begin to do. When you do your best, God will always come true for you. So he dwells in the land of promise, in this own very, you know, some people, you know, I've seen so many Christians who say, as soon as they begin to see some difficulties in their land of promise, oh, it's not my calling, or oh, I go to another calling, oh, it, it, it means it's not my topic, oh, it's not my business, let me go to another one, oh, it's not, just little, little prob, you know, pro problem, oh, it's not my thing, okay, I'll go another one, oh, it's not my place, it's not my this. Because we don't have we don't have patience, because we don't have faith. We don't live by faith. We live by emotions, we live by feelings, we live by instincts, by anything, but not by faith. But Abraham knew better that God has spoken to him, that God said if there is a house or there is a city in front of him, and that he will not give up, he will not return back. So even if things are now difficult, it will not be a reason for him to run away. So he decided to dwell in the land of promise, even as a foreigner, even like a refugee. But he knew that if he does, if he passes through the due diligence, if he pays the price, you know, things will also come, you know, things will work out for him. So he was dwelling in tents with, with Isaac and Jacob. Now, Isaac and Jacob, the thing with Isaac and Jacob is that, you know, it, it's, it reminds me of a lot of us. A lot of us, we just, what we do is that we say, our, my child will never go to what I went through. My children, it's because of my children that I'm suffering this. It's because of my children that I'm working. So we run from pillar to post. We run everywhere. 
uh, trying to pro, you know, make sure that we provide for our children. Oh, we are saying, oh, I just want to provide for the children so that these children will not suffer, so that your children will not go to what I went through, so that you, these children will have a better life. But you see what God is saying here, that it was li- that Abraham was living in tents from one tent to the other, together with the with his here, with his you know with Isaac and Jacob. Isaac and Jacob were also doing the same thing. They were going through the same difficulty. So sometimes your children have to also be exposed to your troubles. Sometimes your children must be exposed to your uh, to your trials. They must be exposed to your suffering. They must be exposed to your discomfort. To, they must also learn to live in tents. They must also learn to live in tents before they live in mansions. They must learn to to you know to to endure before they before they live in pleasure before the pleasure comes. So you know Abraham knew better, and that's why God said he could trust him. He could trust him to pass not just his teachings to his children, but his experience as well. So he, 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 he uh, went through hard situations, hardship, but he also made his children and, you know, his uh, Isaac and Jacob pass through the same hardship so that they will learn the hard way. They will learn to achieve success. They will learn to pay, pay the price for success. And so that when Abraham is gone and when it is now their own turn and generation, they are used to difficulties. They are not afraid of difficulties. They are not afraid of adversary. But by not also they we want to shield our children from adversary. We want to shield our our family from adversary. We just say we don't want them to repeat what we have gone through. But one day or the other we will go. And once we are gone, they will now be left one to face to face with adversary. They will now be left alone, one on one with trouble and, and, and problems. And because you have not trained them to, to cope with problems and troubles, they become victims in life. They become victims in life. So the heirs were with him. In the case of Abraham, he knew better. He kept them in the promise, in the, in the, in the famine with him. He kept them in the tw- times with him. He made sure that they were suffering the same thing he was suffering together with them. Why they waited for the city which, whose fun, which foundations is uh, and whose builder and maker is God? You know the city. They waited for the city, uh, which foundation is not human, and whose builder and maker is God. That city, all of us are supposed to build our own city, and the way to build the city is by faith. And to be, you know, so while you are waiting, I mean, not just waiting, doing nothing, you know, like some people teach today, just wait, God, but if you believe God, just wait. No, they were not just waiting, doing nothing. They were working, building tents, building things, constructing things. You do the same thing we must do today. We must build our systems. We must build our industries. We must build our companies. We must build our, our future. We must walk towards our destiny. We must walk towards our, our hope. We must walk toward our purpose. We must build our, fi- our future, our present, our tomorrow. We must step out, and that is a walk of faith. You see, walk of faith, it cannot be without work. Faith cannot be without work, because faith without work is dead. Wow, my time is up, guys. So if you have not sh- uh, shared this link for yourself, please go share the link. Go share the link. You have the share button under your video. Just go and press that share button and then you'll get a copy. That's the way for you to get a copy. So if you want to get a copy of this message, press the share button and it will come to your timeline. Okay, let me hear what you say. Let me hear some of your comments. Shinwe, you are the first one today. We need to expose our children to challenges, yes, but teach them problem-solving skills if we know better, right? Daniel said, thank you, Pastor, for gingering us with this truth. Thank you. He says, Apostle Paul is a typical example for us believers. He went through shipwreck, through flogging, beating, perils, it is a, yeah, you are right. Oluwa Fola Kemi said, while I'm waiting, I must do something, build system, walk and towards my future. Okom Koshuku, they say, wisdom, wisdom. Sometimes your children should share in your difficulties, right? Pastor Amon said, we extend our invitation to you to come to Kenya. 
No, thank you. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you can see me here on Facebook. That's good. And if you have missed a lot of my teachings, please go to my blog, sonadilajablog.com. You'll be able to follow a lot of those teachings. And if you want to see me, write to guest department, guest at embassyofgod.org. G-U-E-S-T, guest at God Embassy. Not Embassy of God, God Embassy.org. Guest at God Embassy. Not God's, but God Embassy.org. God Embassy.org. You could write there, they, they could invite you to the next event we have here in November from 6 to 12. November 6 to 12. November 6 to 12. Oluwatoin says, Your words are simple and powerful. Thank you. Joseph Oye Wale said, The man of God is too much. He is breaking down this message of faith like breaking down bread into smaller pieces. Wow, kudos. Prudence, nothing good comes easy. We must struggle even in our uncertainty. Even Abraham struggled. Yep. Eukarya said, have a goal, walk towards it, and leave your comfort zone in order to fulfill your calling, right? Julia said, dwell in tabernacles. Afolabi said, if your vision does not include hard work, it means it's an illusion. Shingwe said, focus and perseverance are the tools in attaining goals, right? Daniel says, the righteous man falls seven times and he rises, rises again. Failure is an opportunity to make a change and relaunch ourselves in a new, with a new vigor. Right? Shigo said, this is the message that should have been preached for years in our churches. Okonko said, thank you so much, sir. The seed we are planting in our hearts will yield hundredfold. Amen. Joseph says, any achievement requires that in the beginning we suffer first. This is the normal process of life. Seed time will always proceed harvest. For love is a persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. Yep. Mosun says, How oh, I wish I'd been exposed to all your teachings earlier. I cannot wait to recover the grain gra uh, grounds. Yep. You go to psalmadelajablog.com, you'll see all the messages you've missed. Paul Awodele said, this teaching has debunked the <laughs> so many things I have learned since I was born again 22 years ago. <laughs> she, Sandra, says, this is a breath of fresh air to my soul. I so much needed this message for more clarity in pursuit of my calling. Thank you, Pastor Sunday. Rachel Igbinovia said, I know that because my daughter is wiser for it. She's eight, going on 25. I have no worries that she will survive in any situation. Wow. Kenny says, this teaching is so enlightening. I now understand why God said concerning Abraham that I quote, I know he will teach his children, right? Ola Martin says, thank you, sir, for the word. I will definitely start allowing my kids to see and go through with me, difficulties with me. 
Tena says, I'm excited by your teachings. Thank you. Anastasia said, another beautiful expository teaching by Pastor Sunday that inspires daily wisdom. Daily action, sorry. Obed says, raw wisdom. I'm so blessed. Mwali said, just got in now. I'm going to watch later, okay? Shigo said, the energy from that faith is just unbelievable. Thank you for preaching to me. Victor, to get to the product, you must be willing to go tirelessly through the process. There is no way to avoid it. Yep. Oluwa Fola Kemi Adeola says, thank you very much, sir, for the insightful message. Well, thank you very much, guys. You know, I told you that I have people waiting for me here. So we'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless. Bye.